Hello. Hey, it's working. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, so thank, thank you for joining me. Um, just to give you an, uh, a bit of a in-depth into the In Conversation series, basically it's just a chance for us to do chats with different creatives, like make about like stylists, photographers, models, and it just gives you a chance from your side to just go into a little bit of depth about your, your background, uh, like talking about some of the images and just kind of the, 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 the ideas behind it and how you ended up sort of creating some of the really cool, nice images that you've created. Thank you so much. <laughs> that's, that's cool. Um, so, yeah, so uh, let's let's get started with you. So how did you, from the beginning, how did you get started with makeup artistry? Um, well, I did painting as a, as a kid and as a teenager. And um, once I went to um, high school and university, I stopped. I did something completely different. And um, I kind of missed that part of me. And um, at one point I met someone and that person was like, you were really good at it. why why did you stop what what happened and I was like I don't know <laughs> just life mm -hmm. and I thought how can I do that how can I go back into being creative and playing with colors and um, how can I do that in a more adult way and also um, more realistic <laughs> um, so I went to I went into makeup Funny enough, when I was younger, I hated makeup. I hated anything related to makeup. I couldn't. I had uh, friends in high school who were like, can we do a little bit of liner or a bit of mascara on you? And I'm like, no, don't touch my face. <laughs> and now, um, several years later, here I am. Yeah. And so I love what I'm doing. What, what do you think? What was it? What kind of changed? What? I don't know. I think I felt like I have to it's not I have to but I'm I, I miss that part of me who was creative who um I still wanted that connection with people um and um I like me well it sounds cheesy but I like it's it's a bit addictive that feeling when um you do a bride and and on such an important day of her life and um she's all smiling and happy and oh my god thank you for your makeup and for what you did it's like yeah <laughs> i'm glad you like it <laughs> yeah but also it's the creative part like i mean i love glitter who doesn't love glitter <laughs> uh, playing with uh, paints and colors and it, i don't know i feel like it's still connected to who i was as a kid um yeah bit more grown up ish yeah and is it that sort of you mentioned about um kind of yeah being surrounded by the creative not being on sets and do stuff like that is that a big thing as well just being surrounded by the creative people yeah and <clears throat> i mean most of the people that i worked with um i still work with <laughs> and most of them are very good friends we're still going out we're still in touch um and it's it's the set life as well. It's um, different experiences, different ages, different backgrounds, different culture. It's and, it's and it's not, I mean, I feel very blessed and lucky because it's an opportunity to meet people that normally I wouldn't. I mean, if I would work in an office, I might have some colleagues that are from different backgrounds, but not as often and not so diverse as in the creative world. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, like I said, I feel very blessed and, and I'm happy. I'm, I mean, it makes me happy. It makes me fulfilled. And I think that's a big thing these days. It's, yeah. It, it's important for me, at least. Yeah, I think that's the kind of thing you want to crave and go after. It's the, it's the fulfillment and the happy side of things. And I think if you're getting that and then it's also for work and jobs and everything, I think uh, you're onto a winner there, basically. Yeah, and also it doesn't necessarily feel like a job. Um, okay, when, for example, it's a bit obviously different when you do a bride or when you do um, a test shoot. Um, you, you're not so, not necessarily stressed, but you're more, I mean, to be on time and to, uh, when you do a test shoot, you're a bit more uh, relaxed and um, 
you have more time yeah, <laughs> and yeah. you play with whatever you want unless it's a set mood board but um i mean i'm, I'm happy that i can do both um i can do both creative and, and brides and um i like the energy as well wherever i am it's you give something as a person through your not necessarily your job through passion um and um you receive something else it, and it's not something like forced it comes naturally and i i like that i i don't know like i said it feels good <laughs> yeah so is there any other um uh, any other makeup artists that you've gathered a lot of inspiration from there are a few at the moment i tend to um depending of how i feel which is very um, I tend to look to different people. Um, I, I can't point out there is one makeup artist that I follow and I like. There are a few um, that I'm constantly stalking. <laughs> but, um, other than that, it depends what I'm looking at at that point. Uh, I mean, career-wise, creative-wise. Um, it's, it's not always the same. I can, sometimes if I feel like I want to do body painting where I want to cover someone in glitter, like I said, I love glitter, um, full on, um, I'm looking for people who do that. So um, it's it's everyone and everywhere. It can be anything at any point, so. Yeah, and is it all different sort of, um, again, not just, yeah, makeup, but is it, is it you're gathering different inspiration from different, different yeah. creators so again it might be photographers it might be sort of creative directors or anything like that so yeah it's quite a wide range and i've learned a lot from photographers as well this um you do a course to get quali qualification and then you go into practicing but it's always good to have a photographer's opinion and obviously the model and everyone involved it's it, to go back to what we discussed initially um it's a teamwork and I love it. I'll say that through the whole meeting. I love it. Yeah, yeah. As like I say, it's, it's a whole team process, and it's it's. I think that's what's great about it as well. When you get a big team together, lot like really talented creators, it's everyone bringing their own side of it. Yeah, yeah exactly. I think I've noticed that from my side, and I think when you're doing it, um, if you're kind of going with one person's opinion, one thing, that's fine. But I think yeah, if if, if you allow for everyone to sort of bring their own ideas into it as well and I think you end up creating stuff and finding stuff that you didn't think of yourself or anything like that as well and you bounce ideas off each other yeah and also I that's how you learn that's how you grow you can't I feel like if you you're and I'm talking strictly from my perspective someone else might feel different but from my perspective I'm on one way um I mean if you look to my my work to my um Instagram account for example you'll find that i tend to do both fashion and, and beauty i can't choose and also it's the people i work with um i i like to have different opinions and different ideas and to work on different concepts and, and it's stimulating at the same time I mean, you don't feel stuck in the same routine over and over again but again like i said that's from my point of view my perspective mm -hmm. yeah um well that'll take us into um the first image actually as well i think so the first one i was going to talk about is i think it's from cable magazine and um, okay one with uh jana sky um yeah so kind of just i think that's like you say you mentioned about the sort of beauty side of things and stuff as well so <clears throat> then, yeah uh, just uh, give us kind of an insight into that what was the type of thing you were going for really with that um on that particular look um i kind of went with the flow <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because uh, i have to i have to confess i was very nervous at that shoot and because i was working with the whole team for the first time and um I knew what I was doing, but at the same time, I wasn't hundred percent sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was a bit nervous. And then, I mean, I talked to the photographer and with the model, and we kind of decided like just just 
do how you feel, do what you feel like. And I just went with it. Um, sometimes, funny enough or weird enough, um, if I go with how I feel on the moment, it looks better and end up, I mean, we end up having a better result mm -hmm. if, in a way. Are you kind of going with, is it a case of adapting during the shoot and seeing what's working, what's not? Um, like, that, say, for example, this one was that was the, um, did you get like sort of mood boards behind it and kind of this is the shoot, the look, or I'm guessing by the sounds of it, was it a bit more open, free of let's, we've got a few ideas, but then let's build around that and see what happens? Um, on that particular shoot, it was a combination of go with the flow, but also we had the mood board up, I mean, obviously, um, but on that particular look, um, I keep saying that, <laughs> um, I just, it, it's completely different than what it was in the mood board. And I just went with it. Um, I mean, the photographer was like, just do something feel that fits the mood board, but feels right for all of us and for you mainly. And I said, well, thank you very much. And I remember the, the um, model saying, what would you do? <laughs> hmm. um, and I said, hmm, let me, let me just look around. And sometimes you just look at a palette, for example. And that was, that was the whole thing on, I mean, the lips and the eyes were done with one palette. And just looked at it. I'm like, what color colors would work, or what what combination of color would would work, or what how would translate well into an image and onto the model as well? Yeah. So did you find yourself a, a kind of adapting that to the model with the shoot? So again, yeah, what's going to work best with her? Yeah. Yeah. Um, mood board model and how I felt. Yeah. <laughs> so, and um. Because it's very strong as well, like there's the colours on the eyes and the, the lips, really strong. Was that, is is that, did you kind of layer that? Or was that just going, I'm going to go straight, straight fit, really strong? Straight in. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, I mean, there is another look with only the eyes, but um, <clears throat> I know some people, I'm sorry, <clears throat> I know some people are a bit, not necessarily afraid, but um, don't do both. There was this um, um, old word. <laughs> um, if you do a strong eye, don't do a strong lip. Or if you do strong blush, don't do anything. Just to, to keep it low um, or balanced. But at the same time, I feel like you can do all of them as long as they are uh, cohesive um, and they work together with the features of the model or with um, that's why I said I said that I go a lot with that's what feels right, and not necessarily for me as as a person, but also for everyone else involved. Um, I'm just looking at things. I, I, when I do, I mean, in general, in life, when I do something, I do listen to my instinct a lot, mm -hmm. um, and I'm looking at things and just clicks and I go with it. Yeah. Well, I can't, I can't use, sorry, I, I can't use specific words to describe it, but it's, it's a weird feelings that works for me. Well, no, so, yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think <laughs> you kind of have to trust your instinct. You trust your, your own skill. And I think you mentioned about the certain stuff, the same with photographers, well, the certain kind of rules that you stick to with certain things a little bit, but I think you also have to be confident in yourself and in your sort of creative side and your creative skills to kind of, to push those boundaries a little bit and like say sometimes it like what this image you're saying sort of the sort of rules of like no strong eyes and strong people but it it I mean sometimes it, as it shows it works it's I think you just from your own intuition you kind of know I have to confess though that I had a few doubts after the shoot um, <laughs> I was like should I it was 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 it the right call wasn't I think doubts it's a big thing in our creative world is it the right thing was it but when the photographer said, well, we're going to cable, I was like, yes. yes. <laughs> um, 
um, it was actually came out uh, on the week of my birthday. I'm like, yeah, that's a good present. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's great. It's a stunning image. And I think um, like we say about, yeah, it, it kind of shows the, um, I think that's a nice point as well to sort of say that you can trust lots, trust your intuition, trust your kind of your, your feeling and if you're confident in yourself. Yeah, I think, and it's and it shows because you can might feel afterwards, oh, I could have done it or I didn't give it a go. And I think when you look back and it's worked, it's a nice feeling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, I'm, I have to say that I'm really proud of that editorial. And um, it was such a, um, for me, it was such a, a beautiful opportunity to work with different people and amazing people. And they were very sweet, very kind and just loved it. And I would love to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> is there um uh is there any like creatives you've worked with that you've really anyone you can name or anyone you've enjoyed working with um i mean is that a big thing like say what you love working do you like working with a small group of people or a bigger team any preferences um depends depends on the on the project um sometimes i like for example sometimes i do assisting and i like the dynamic of a bigger team and also you can pick up things from different members of the teams and you can learn, I mean, yeah, you can, you can learn a few more tricks uh, or how they say these days, a few more hacks. <laughs> 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 and, um, and that's a good thing. But sometimes a smaller theme, it's, it's better. Um, like I said, depends on the, on the project. Um, I like both. I couldn't give you a name of a person that I worked with. I usually fit in very well with, I mean, in, a, in I can't think of a, of a shoot where I was and there were tensions. I mean, also I'm the one, when we arrive on set, I'm the first one to start. Mm -hmm. First one to connect with the model. And I mainly, yeah, I'm, I mainly stay in touch with the model during the shoot. And at the end, you, if you have time, you stay, I don't know, another 10, 15 minutes to talk with the, the, the other members of the team, just to get to know them. Because mm -hmm. otherwise it's just thinking, talking and focusing on the shoot, on the project. Mm -hmm. uh, if I am to work with all the people that I worked with before, I would do it again. <laughs> yeah. Do you have this? Okay. It's, well, is, is there, um, I mean, I mean, maybe not as much with what the same more with test shoot is, is there certain people that you work with um, quite often? Do you have certain people that you like, say certain, well, don't have to name, but like, is that, do you have certain photographers that you work or models or anything like that you kind of like working with again and again? Yeah, um, there are a few models I, keep in touch with and also I mean with models is a bit I mean without offending anyone but it's a bit more to fit the mood board and also um because I mean on the test shoot uh, everyone brings their time and then their energy um and it has to work to, to work all that mm -hmm. and um it has to fit. I mean, if I have a specific project in mind, I go to a specific photographer and a specific model because, it, well, it has to, but it, it needs to fit, to fit, uh, sorry. <laughs> it, it has to, yeah, to fit the, the mood board. Um, I mean, if you wanna do a beauty test shoot, you wouldn't go to a fashion photographer necessarily unless, they want to experiment, but you would go for a beauty photographer. Mm -hmm. um, that would be my criteria of choosing who I work with at that point. But like I said, I, I'm open to work with anyone that I've worked before. It's, I don't know, I, most, of, most of the people that I work with are, are my friends. Mm -hmm. um, some very, very good friends. We go out, um, we, on holiday together <laughs> yeah. but I try not to mix too much um, the, um, the work ish with uh, friendship or I think it's a matter of respect 
okay, we're friends, but I don't want to take advantage of your work just because you're a photographer or your model. Every time I need someone to collaborate with, or it, it won't be fair mm -hmm. if that if that makes sense. Yeah, I, well, I think um, I mean even just from a yeah the photography side as well. Um, I quite like having um certain uh like models certain make up artists that I've, that I've worked with quite a few times i i like um especially for like my own stuff like working with i think it's just more people that i know you can get kind of comfortable with and there's that sort of that, you know, that trust and you've, you've worked with before um and i think it's i think it's having a wide range of people you kind of know like like you say that the certain looks you want to go for on a shoot um but then I, I think it's kind of building it around that so i think it's a bit of a mix really i think so, so with we yeah, with from the photography side i do like i mean it just it makes it a lot easier when you're when you're all kind of comfortable with you when you know each other a bit more as well yeah and also um communication is very important um and you need to understand each other as a team regarding that specific project um and i think that makes it work yeah well that that's what i think like i said yeah i think that that kind of trust side comes in as well it's also people knowing that you you can you can get the the look that you're after you can get it with them um yeah i think and i think yeah i think it's definitely a case of building up a big sort of team of creatives that you've worked with and i, and I think once you kind of i find it takes time but once you do that then you can when you're sourcing uh different people for different things for a shoot I think once it do, it definitely makes it a lot easier when it's people you've worked with before and you know you can trust that you're going to get the shot that you want. Yeah, and sometimes you just point something and okay, got it. <laughs> you don't have to explain all of all of the story, just that, and that's it. They know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and it, the, I think the more you work with people, at the end you're on your same wavelength as well. They know the kind of thing you're after. So, yeah, it definitely makes it a lot easier. And sometimes I'm, I'm on set and I hear the photographer Mia, and I know exactly what they want. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, just a second, give me a yeah, second. That's a good sign. That's a sign that, yeah, you've uh, you've definitely sometimes been working with them quite a few times then. Sometimes it's a bit creepy, actually. Like, how do you, yeah, we know each other. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's a good sign. Um, so the, the next image um, is the one of, uh, I think Maisie Stock is the model, yeah. um, and that's the one with the sort of the sort of the pink eyes and like the the lipstick as well. So yeah, again, with the same with this was um, uh, just give us a kind of insight into this. What was the the thought behind this one? Um, with that one, we had a very specific mood board, <laughs> and uh, again, I went completely against it. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds too good. Doesn't sound too good. But, no, um, <laughs> no, um, I I don't want to be perceived like someone who goes against the mood board all the time. No, <laughs> <laughs> we did. Yeah, we did have a um, a mood board, a very specific one. And then when we arrived on on set, we, I mean, talking about understanding each other, um, it was a, um, a photographer I worked with before. She's um, a friend of mine. And we kind of went through the board, um, looked at the features of the model. Um, and we kind of, again, the photographer said that, and I remember that she was like, Mia, I trust you, just go with it. And I remember looking at her and I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> It's just like, yeah, just go with it. And I have to say that um, that particular image is one of my most talked about and liked image from my portfolio. And I'm quite proud of it. And that's why I feel like it's very important for me to go, just go with it feel the the model feel the photographer feel the um, the whole vibe of the shoot so, so how how long ago was this one can you remember around about the date 
um, I think it was either November or sometime before the lockdown, yeah. before the pandemic. Um, uh, 20, 2020 would it have been. Yeah, end of 2019. 2019, yeah. Something like that. I can't remember exactly, but I know it was a, I think it was November 2019. Mm -hmm. And so, so um, the, this point, because um, you say again with the being trusted, the photographer giving you, saying, I want you to kind of run this, go this. So at this point, are you pretty confident? I mean, you must have been to sort of, to go and create that look, you could be confident in your ability and, and the kind of vision you've got of what you want to create. Um, on that one, I wasn't, I wasn't sure. I just took it step by step. Um, I just looked at the, at Maisie's features and she has beautiful uh, brows, amazing brows. Um, she has beautiful skin, beautiful eyes, incredibly beautiful features. And, um, I just wanted to emphasize that, but at the same time being a bit more Push you with the look a bit more creative and um just just played a bit with colors um i just did something step back did a different thing it works yeah just go with it um that one was more like step by step and when i reached that particular look i said okay that's enough that's fine i feel like it's balanced and that's it. I wouldn't do more than that. Mm -hmm. And that's that. Um, because I think the, the photographer is it Jolene Kylie, is that the photographer? Yeah. So that's you say that's someone that you've you've worked with, you kind of you yes, build that trust of each other, you kind of worked for each other before. Yeah. And I think <laughs> after the shoot, Jolene was like, Yeah, everyone I'm gonna work with from now on. I will use this image as a standard of how I want the brows to be done. <laughs> it's very specific with how she wants certain things to look on the model. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, no pressure, Mia, from now on, no pressure. <laughs> but you, I'm glad she wanted. Yeah. Do you prefer, um, with the makeup as well, do you prefer those, I mean, do, do you just, do you like a range of things or do you prefer a certain, do you like prefer a stronger look with the makeup or do you prefer it a bit lighter? Um, again, if I don't have a preset, a mood board and I, it's not a set thing, I would go with both. Um, again, depending on the model, um, what they can do, what, because I also noticed that, um, obviously as a photographer, you, you know, um, as a, I mean, any creative will know that um, if the model doesn't feel comfortable with something she does or with the look, with a specific look, if she doesn't like it, 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 it kind of shows on camera mm -hmm. and on test shoots and even on, on jobs, I always ask the model, is there anything in particular you don't like? Even if it's a mood board, we can work around because I want models to feel comfortable as well um unless it's something okay cover her and glitter that's it i have a thing for glitter <laughs> <laughs> um unless it's it's that um or i mean obviously one of the things i like it's the flexibility of, of things it doesn't have to be black or white it can be a range of colors and Again, you can just go with it. Um, I do like a natural look. It's it shows the beauty of the model. Because um, um, also, it's um. Sorry, English is not my first language. So that's I have right, to. That's right. but, um, yes, I do like a natural look. I would choose one it's easy to to do it's it's harder to do than a creative one because you have on a creative one you have all these colors and you can kind of mask certain things but with a, nat a natural i'm talking you no know, makeup look you have to be very good at what you're doing in order to achieve that look 
And also a lot of photographers, when they say, because the, the balance between a, a no makeup look, a natural look and a soft glam, it's very thin. And it's, I feel like a, a no makeup look is harder to achieve. And that's why I like it. It's more challenging, but more rewarding at the same time. Yeah. Is that because, like I said, with the no makeup look, is it because you're trying to create something that's, it's like I say, it's very light, you're doing a look, but you don't want it to look yeah. like a look, you want it to look natural, basically. Yeah. You want to create something that's there, but doesn't look there. Mm -hmm. Or I'm not sure if it makes sense, but it's, it's not supposed to show. I mean, for example, if you do contour, it's not supposed to show. It's supposed to be just the shadow of the way the lights are or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quite an interesting thing. You want you want it to be, yeah, you want it to be there and you want to do your job and do that, but then yeah, you don't want it to be seen. <laughs> it's a very yeah, interesting thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I, I feel like a lot of makeup artists are afraid of creating a no-makeup look because it's a bit harder to achieve and doesn't show as much on camera than a creative look. Yeah. Um, well, we'll go on to the th uh, third image, yeah. Um, and that's the, it's the one with the kind of gels over it. Uh, Dylan Hitchens is the model. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've got Alex uh, Masek was the photographer. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, this this one kind of jumps out a bit because let's say because the colors, the gels on it. Um, so yeah, for, I mean, that's a big thing with the image. First of all, how is that to work with when you do makeup again? Do you, you, you're having to adapt to that? Uh, how does it feel when you got those sort of colors and lights hitting on the model's face? I love that image. <laughs> First of all, I mean, I love that image. <laughs> so the whole point was talking about what we said earlier, do a no makeup look. It has to look natural, but it has to look like this. On that day, um, I worked with um, Alex on on different project projects on different. It was a whole day, and there were different models uh, for different things. And on this specific image, um, on this specific look, um, he was like, "It has to have a grunge vibe with a no makeup look. It has to look natural." um but at the same time just push yourself a little and also when someone says push yourself a little is my push yourself a little or yours which one is it mm -hmm. and he was like just just go with flow mm -hmm. <laughs> okay um and again i looked at the model's face um initially she had the no makeup look and I remember talking with her officer and she said something like, this is one of the most natural makeups I ever had. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I've seen what you, you did and how you did it. And I am impressed of how it came out. Um, and then from that, we went into um, a grunge look uh, which is the image where we're talking about. Um, I just took a pencil, line around the eye, took my finger and just like, and that, that kind of took me back at what we said the first time, the very first time into painting and playing with colors. You know, like when you take a pencil on, on paper and just rub it and gets like a smudgy sort of a thing on paper. I didn't, I, so I, I didn't know the words. Um, and just took the pencil and rubbed it around her eyes and it had to look like she just slept with makeup on, but at the same time looks glowy and skin is perfect. And it's like when you are in your late teens, early twenties and you go out and you go to a party and you don't have to worry about removing a makeup and doing a whole 30 steps skin care routine after or before bed or after in case god forbid you slept with makeup on um, you just woke up with smudged black all over your face and you still look radiant and beautiful 
Yeah, so that was the that's great yeah that's what well, I, I love that it's an interesting concept i love the idea behind it um and is, is that something you you when you say you kind of you give them the freedom then and they stay the photographer saying kind of go with it and you thought like the grungy look um saying about the eyes is that was that something you you thought you, you've got a starting point i'm going to start with the eyes and kind of work is, as you're doing it did you kind of know that's what i want to start with um so like i said initially it was a no makeup look and then we went into the um, smudge liner right um i don't know i just because you were talking about gels and the way it should look with the lighting and i thought you take two simple things um as a black eyeliner that you smudged it um and also the um, the trans the when you smudge it, it, it gives like a transition color from um, black to gray to the skin tone, and I thought it would look good as well. Um, I mean, it will translate okay into the image into what we were looking for, and skin is just glowy, nat natural, and beautiful. There is nothing else I could have. Not that I could have. I wanted to do. I didn't want to do anything else. I didn't want to add anything else because I thought the it will be a, a good result um, with the makeup, the hair, um, the posing, the lighting. Everything will come together, and will we will get what we wanted. And Alex seemed to be very happy, so I was like, "Thanks, <laughs> God." <laughs> yeah, and I think. Um... I mean, you can see the glow on it on the, in the on like sort of around the sort of cheap as well. Um, mm -hmm. And I think ha, when you're when you're doing when you're creating that look, again, again, are you speaking with Alex? Are they saying like we're going to have have the gels on this? Are you are you kind of testing it with that? Is it to sort of see how it works with it? Um, as far as I remember, I might be wrong. Um, I think he was testing as well, and we did a, a range of looks. I mean, it, makeup wise, were only two looks, um, but um, styling and um, photography wise, um, I remember Alex tested a few things as well because just wanted to see how everything looks, what we came up with. Um, we just played along. Um, we didn't have a particular thing we wanted to do. Um, we just, again, went with the flow. <laughs> yeah, and you're kind of doing it and you know, test a little yeah. bit and that's, that's worked, we're hitting it there. That's yeah. kind of on the right tracks, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so um, in terms of um, uh, advice really for sort of a makeup eyes kind of starting out, anyone who's looking to get into that area, is there anything, any advice or anything you can sort of wisdom from your side from doing when you were starting at yourself, anything you can sort of say to do, to not to do, any, anything like that? For me, it's a bit, a bit difficult to give an advice because I don't consider myself being um, someone who has many years of experience, wise enough, I know everything. Um, what I could say from what I've learned so far is do what's right for yourself. Um, don't make compromises thinking that it's going to pay off one day. But I'm talking about compromises that doesn't feel right for you. If it doesn't feel, doesn't feel comfortable. Because at the end of the day, you go home and you think, maybe I shouldn't have done this shoot. Maybe I should have put myself in this position. Um, and I'm talking about, I mean, for example, you go on a shoot and you realize that everyone else is paid, but you're not. Or um, you have, you go on a shoot where you're meant to do something, but you end up doing something else. Um, and it's, it's not, it's, time is short. Life is precious. Don't waste it and um, be nice, be kind with everyone, that, be reliable, that's a huge thing. Um, don't gossip. 
<laughs> That's another big thing. It's very easy to go into, to fall into that chit chat thing. No. That's why when we talked earlier, I'm the first one to set, to set, I'm to, the first one to start. I don't have time to think about what's happening. Sometimes I lose track of the conversation and I end up asking the same questions that everyone asked and knows the answer. But I don't mind because I know I'm there to do something. And I don't want people to just wait for me or waste their time because I'm gossiping with everyone else around. Um, yeah, be nice, be kind, be true to yourself. And I think that's that's it. That's, that's good. No, I think that's good advice. Yeah, very good advice. Um, the last image that takes us to, um, yeah, so this is the the beach one with uh, Marine and Eri. Um, so I've picked this up. This one's, was this more of a recent shoot? Yes, um, <laughs> that was the, September, actually. September, yeah. So, um, I mean, I think this one compared to me, this feels a bit more sort of fashion-y as well. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, what was, was this? Uh, for was this for a test was this for a uh, brand um it was a it was for an um, editorial and um that was a um set mood board uh, we knew exactly what we we're doing we shot in, um, in brighton on the beach on a very 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 windy day <laughs> <laughs> um you can um, you can actually see from from some of the images that but the wind added to the vibe and it was amazing. Um, on that one, I did follow the mood board. <laughs> um, because again, everything had to be, I couldn't do, uh, I don't know, pink liner because the mood board of the clothes and styling and um, photography wise was, wasn't for that. So yeah, sometimes you do follow the mood board and you do what works with the whole concept. Um, I love that image. Again, it has, um, it's not just necessarily for the look, but I worked with people that I love. They're my friends. Um, the model was new and we got along very well. Uh, she was very lovely, very sweet. Um, despite the weather, because sometimes I think we take models for, for granted that they're put in some position like it's windy, it's cold, um, they're freezing and they're posing um, on, I mean, you know, Brighton, the beach is all rocks and <laughs> pebbles. And it's not an easy thing to lie down on without anything underneath, um, just in very thin clothes and it's cold and it's wet. And okay, I have to do touch-ups with the makeup and you kind of try to protect her eyes from the wind, but it's so windy, it doesn't, whatever you're doing, it doesn't help. But we, we made it work and we enjoyed it and it, came out pretty good I think <laughs> yeah well I think you can see from that image I mean you say about the wind you can see the wind on her hair really blow I mean it's captured a lot really nice just as it's going across um and it, I mean if she is cold she doesn't show it in that image as well um yeah. so yeah she seems yeah. yeah she seems to sort of hold it really well um but yeah the makeup in this one it's a bit it's a bit sort of softer um yeah. So did, I know you said that it was very close to the mood board, did they, was, was the mood board catered around the, the go, we've got the model, this is the kind of look that's going to fit her, do you, do you know, is that how it's done? I think so, yeah, um, it was, it had, everything had to, to, to work together. Um, I, when um, Anzi approached me about this, this project, I was like, just, give me the mood board for hair and makeup. Um, and she did send a little bit about the clothing, but I didn't want to know too much. Um, it didn't, for me, it wouldn't make any difference because I knew the makeup is soft. I knew it's just a bit of bronzy cheeks and just everything. I had to work with the model's features. 
And um, that's it. I didn't, I don't, because there are certain things that I'm, and I'm not good at like styling or photography. And that's why I respect that. I mean, I respect the people who do it because I know I'm not able to. And that's why we are a team. That's why we work together. That's why we talk about it. That's why we, um, um, yeah, we do share ideas, but that's pretty much it. Well, that's like we said at the start, isn't it, as well about um, having a team and everyone trusting each person mm -hmm. in the team. And that's I think, um, yeah, there's, no, there's nothing worse than if you are on a shoot or something and someone's just taking complete control or anything like that. You want, like, basically, if they're not taking any inputs, you, you don't want that. You want, a, you want, you've got people there for reasons. You've got people, experts in their areas. So you want to be yeah, able exactly. to live with them. Exactly. I, I completely agree. I mean, Lizzie, Lizzie the, the stylist, she's very good at what she does. And I trust her. I've worked with her so many times. Um, as the as well, um, the model is just stunning. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and I knew I knew it's gonna come out great. Um, okay, the weather was the way it was, but it was. I don't think we would have had this result if the weather would have been differently. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, it just worked together. I think it was just it was meant to be. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I think you say like the big thing obviously the wind and we said about hair and I think. Mm -hmm. I think her hair is perfect. Like she's got the great hair for you. Want the kind of wind blowing through it. She's got long sort of hair, and you, you want that kind of effect that it gives. Um, do do you prefer? I mean, I've seen like a lot of studio stuff. How we, do, you, do you like doing beach shoots? Do you prefer mainly studio? I can do whatever, whenever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because. I know it's easier to do in the studio. You have more control, you have a little bit more time, um, but I don't mind um, because you can get such great results um, doing a photo shoot outside, um, like the one we just talked about. Um, why miss that for the comfort of a studio? It's, I like an outdoor shoot. Um, the only thing, and that happened <laughs> um, last year, and I, I don't remember exactly when it was, but I know it was very, very cold. And we had to stop earlier because first of all, the model started to feel unwell. It was, it was so cold. We did only three looks. Makeup wise, I wanted to do like a smudged pencil underneath. The pencil froze. I couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just trace the line and that was it it kind of added to the look but it wasn't what we went what we wanted and we we had to we couldn't do more than that but that again adds to the vibe of the shoot uh, we end up being published um even with three looks um but um that's the thing I wouldn't necessarily want to put people through again. And because I know from my perspective, I can't deliver the results we're looking for. The model is freezing. Um, the photographer is freezing. The stylist is freezing. It was, I mean, we, we laughed about it after, but it's, it's something I, I wouldn't necessarily do it again. Yeah. Or I wouldn't go on a, in a place where I feel like a rat would come out or God forbid something moves around or I wouldn't like to put people through that. It's... Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, I think um, we'll go again to the last question. I think it's quite a nice question to finish with. Um, I think uh, as, as a five-year plan or a future plan or anything like that, is there anything you have? Is there anything you... Um, with terms of jobs or certain clients or types of looks that you want to do? Is there anything that you've got further down the line that you're, you're thinking ahead and think this is what I want to achieve in the next year, in the next five years? Um, I, Because I'm so much focused on following my heart and again, just go with the flow, I don't like to plan much. 
especially after the experience of the last two years. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, what I would like to do is focus more on doing something that makes me happy and focus more on my concept um, or concepts um, or projects that I would like to experiment and try. I don't have a specific thing in mind or I know whatever it's meant to be will happen. If it's not meant to be, that's it. It's it's not like I said, life it's it short, time is precious. It's it's no point for me at least stressing about or putting pressure on myself. Oh my god, I have to achieve this or that by the end of the year, or because you lose the, the joy of doing things as well. Mm -hmm. Or oh my god, I want to work with that client. Because focusing on, on that client, you might miss the other ones. And I, I, I mean, I love work with whoever I work. I, I love I, and I like to enjoy that particular experience. Because you might learn something from there. You might end up with a bigger project or a bigger job from that small one or the one that you're not chasing. Um, and that's how that's what I've learned as well. That I mean, working with people that um, you might think is not worth it. Actually, it was the best choice ever. Um, just because you followed your heart, you knew it was the right thing for you, and you just again went with it. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you're right. I think like say, um, keeping sort of quite open minded, keeping your options open. Um, and yeah, like I say, it, it definitely, it can open up doors and stuff that you didn't think. Let's see, if you've got a certain thing that you're trying to pursue, that's good. But yeah, you, you don't want to close off to other opportunities, basically. Yeah, exactly. It's, um, I want, I want, I want to be happy. I mean, we went through a pandemic. Um, if before that I was, oh, I, I want this, I want that, I want to achieve this. I have a plan. I was so organized, so organized. Now I'm like, whatever. Mm -hmm. and just enjoy, enjoy things. Because, I mean, being at home for so long and not being able to work for so long, it made me realize what I, what, what I would do if I am to work now. What, what would I go for? And now I have the opportunity to do that. And why wouldn't I do it? Yeah. Well, I think, um, well, I mean, judging by, the work you've produced so far as well and i, I think having the chat as well a, bit, a big thing you definitely get is you you thrive on that the, yeah the, the freedom and again like so sort of having trust in yeah your own abilities and your own your ideas so um i think definitely i think that's the kind of yeah the takeaway i think from from your side is definitely a, a thing of that of keep keeping an open mind keeping having the freedom to do the sort of things you want to do um and I think, yeah, I think the more you do that, let's say what, what you've produced so far has been, it's like, I love the work. And I think, um, yeah, the, the, if the more of it we could see, the better. Thank you so much, David. <laughs>